Folks, it's time to do some major detailing on Townie Soprano, my 97 Lincoln Town Car, because, well, we're going to be doing something very special with it. So stay tuned. <laughs> So folks, in this video, we are going to be starting by detailing the crap out of this Lincoln Town Car because we want to turn it from this into this. But in order to do that, it kind of needs a major overhaul. The glass, the interior, the floors, the paint is in terrible shape. We're going to take a look all around this car and show you where we're focusing our attention on today. And then I'm going to explain to you exactly what this challenge is that I'm talking about that involves County Soprano. So let's check over the car. So obviously we've got to start with getting this thing washed up. There is tons of tree grime and dirt all over this car because it's been sitting for so long. I haven't even so much as washed it since I bought it back in August and I've only got about 200 kilometers on this thing of actual drive time. So we've got to get this thing spit polished because we do have a challenge coming up with it and I'll explain that later on in the video. But some of the areas that we want to focus on as far as the actual paint correction, as you can see, we've got some clear coat that's been blistering up here and all the way up on the cowl part, uh, it's actually peeling off and there's a spot over there that we'll actually have to uh, do some touch up to. We're not going to be doing anything as far as spraying, but we are going to be doing some compounding, trying to clean up these spots. The worst is up here on the roof where the clear coat has peeled off. We're gonna make that look like new again, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. As we come around to the back, same thing. This trunk lid has been painted before, very poorly, I might add. But we've also got lots of tree grime back in here. This little piece of uh, logo is, is uh, off. We're gonna get that back on once we get it cleaned up. And you'll see all around the lettering, it's got some tree grime kind of caked on in there. And again, the clear coat's gone off the back bumper. As we roll around to the interior, it's not terrible. It's mostly what I would classify as clean dirt. There's a lot of uh, spills from the trees and just some dirty stuff. And, and these, uh, this leather is in really good shape. We're gonna clean it all up. The interior of the windows are filthy. And of course, we've got things like this here uh, that we're gonna have to uh, you know, vacuum out all that tree grime inside the door jams, same thing. Up front, this is where most of the dirt is, is on the driver's side. Uh, the seats are gonna clean up really well, and the dash is quite dusty, so we're gonna get all of that cleaned up. And uh, we're gonna try and make this car look as best as we can for a car that's almost 30 years old. If you guys are not subscribed to Old Car Guy yet, and you like or love this Panther Platform content, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button, because I've got three of these in the fleet, and there's always a video coming frequently on these Panther platforms. First things first, we gotta give this thing a wash, so I'm gonna do that, and I'll be right back with you. Now that we've got the car all washed up and wiped down, I want to wait a little bit before I go do any buffing and paint correction on this thing, simply because, well, things like uh, little pieces of trim here, well, they hold water and, you know, all your weather stripping. So what we're going to do while we're waiting for that to dry is we're going to make our way into the interior and we are going to, uh, you know, wipe down that real dusty dash, uh, all the dashboard, wipe down all the seats. We're going to get a good vacuum in throughout the front and back, and then we'll come in and we'll kind of get all that detailed along with 
the windows on the inside because when this thing gets fogged up or you're driving into direct sunlight, all that off gas and that comes off of your dash collects on your windshield and you can't see nothing. Here's a good example. So right there in that back window, specifically where the sun is shining through, you can see those swipe marks and uh, that's pretty hard to look out. So we will be washing with glass cleaner the inside and outside of the glass to help us so that we can see a little bit better when we're driving. So uh, we're gonna start with a vacuum and then we'll go through with a wipe down and uh, then we'll get our glass done. Once the glass is done, the last thing we do is we'll kind of put a little bit of a, you know, shine on all the surfaces, except for the seats. We don't want to be sliding around the seats. So uh, I'm going to grab the vacuum cleaner. We're going to get in here and we're going to start doing some vacuuming. So now that we're about ready to tackle the interior of this Lincoln, I want to show you a couple of common areas. And I want you to go check on your vehicle too, because I guarantee you it's this bad. A couple of the high touch areas that generally are disgusting. Let's take a look. So up here on the steering wheel, this is not always just wear in the leather in this case. If you've got a plastic or a rubberized steering wheel, you're gonna have a lot of gunk build up on here. That's from your hands, folks. If you're going through the drive through at McDonald's and you're touching your steering wheel and you're popping french fries in your mouth, yeah, that's getting in your mouth. Pretty gross, eh? Another area is these touch buttons. If your car has touch buttons on the steering wheel for control like cruise, and over here you've got the uh, radio and volume, they're pretty gross. In fact, over here, you can hardly even read the words that are there because, well, they're caked up with so much gunk. Another high touch area is the top of the turn lever stock as well as the top of your shifter. If you're not cleaning these on a regular basis, it's just a matter of time before you get sick. Because like I said, we all go through the drive through we all eat while we're driving, going down the road, and we're touching this crap. I'm guilty. And I just showed you how gross it can be. And, uh, you know, when we're done with all them salty french fries from McDonald's, what are we doing? Yeah, that's right. Anyways, we're going to go, we're going to get this cleaned up so that it shines just like a new one. And the way we're going to do that is with a little bit of all-purpose cleaner. You don't need a whole lot. We're going to spray it on there, let it soak a bit. And I'm going to start with a soft bristled detailing brush to try and get in there and get a lot of those pieces all cleaned up. If you find that this isn't working or isn't cutting in, well, you can always go back and grab a nylon bristle brush and kind of get in there and uh, get that all scrubbed up. When you're done, a microfiber cloth gives that a little bit of a wipe and all of a sudden you can now read your letters on your buttons. Freaking air compressor, man, every time. Now that we've got the interior all wiped down, the door panels, the dash, everything, the steering wheels all cleaned up, it's now time to tackle the windshield. And the reason why we're doing the windshield before we put the shine on is because if I get shine on the dash and accidentally onto the window, it's harder to keep it clean. And I don't want all of this stuff here dripping down onto the dash and leaving spots. So if you're using a, an ammonia-based or an aerosol-based uh, window cleaner, make sure you do that, and then the very last thing you do is shine your dash. Now, I'm not gonna be using anything too shiny because uh, I don't like it slippery and slick and wet. We're gonna be using something that's basically gonna give it like a kind of a matte finish, but you're gonna know it's clean. Probably the worst thing I hate about detailing a car is the windows. I absolutely hate it. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this little squeegee because I came across this by watching some of these detailing shows like Armor and Mad and The Detail Geek and they use a similar product. It's just a silicone squeegee that uh, you go and you spray your window and you get it all cleaned up with your microfiber. And when you're done, spray it one more time, use the squeegee and that'll get rid of any haze marks that may be left over. So let's try it out, see how it works. <music> Uh, windshield. So far, I think I like that method. It seems to uh, 
get the grime initially with the microfiber, and then the finishing product is using the squeegee. So there we go. We've got the interior all shined up, all four door panels, the dash, as well as the steering wheel. And uh, everything came out very, very well. This car wasn't what I would classify as filthy dirty. It was really just a bunch of clean dirt. Clean dirt means pretty much you can vacuum it up or wipe it down. So the interior is done to my satisfaction. All the windows are done. Now we can move on to getting this paint to look like brand new. Well, as best as we can. Let's get to work. So we've changed venues. We're over here in my garage and we're getting ready to do some buff and polish. Now, normally I would start on the hood so that you guys could get a good uh, kind of before and after polishing, but the sun is shining through this window right here in front of me onto the car. And it's gonna be a perfect opportunity to show you how good this little buffing machine and this compound work. So I'll show you the before and after. Let's take a look. So there's the sun coming in this window here and it's shining on the car. So what I'm going to do is I am going to buff out this back quarter panel or at least a portion thereof, and then we can compare it to the door. So that way you'll be able to see that, you know, as nice and clean as this looks right now, we're gonna make that black paint pop. So we're gonna be using a random orbit today and we're also gonna be using the 3M compound to uh, get this thing cut. And once it's cut, then we can go ahead and use the polish. Now, this is a pretty good example of seeing swirl marks in the paint. Now, you're seeing all kinds of it there from where the sun is shining on it. What we're going to be doing today is going to be hopefully eliminating all of that so we get just black paint. So, without further ado, let's get this thing all set up and let's get to buffing. and polished, I can see depth in that. You can see the reflection of my phone very clearly. A little bit of dust there. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and close this door. And it's night and day, the difference. There's the door and there's the fender. So what a difference a little bit of TLC makes. We're gonna do this whole car. So uh, we're gonna time lapse a little bit of this so you guys can see. I'm gonna do down the whole side of this car with the uh, cut. I'll come back using the polish and we should have a glass like finish the whole way down the car. I'm excited to get this thing done and get it outside in the sunlight so you guys can take a look at the whole car. So we've got this whole side done, not just with the cut, but also with the buff. Now, I did tell you earlier in the video that we were gonna do something special to look after this clear coat and how it's peeling. We've got spots here. We gotta go across the whole back side of the bumper and the hood, or sorry, the roof, is probably the worst spot on here. The trick is, there really isn't any trick. We're just gonna continue on the path that we're on with the cutting and buffing. We're gonna be a little more aggressive on those spots to help blend that in and I've already done one spot and I want to show you what it looks like. So I've used the 3M cutting compound and I really just kind of held on to that. Walked it back and forth several times, got it good and hot. And uh, once the compound kind of hazed over, wiped it down, went over the polish, looks pretty good. At least it will from maybe 30 feet. So anyways, let me show you what that looks like. So basically this is what we started with here. And over on this side, it had the exact same thing. In fact, it came all the way down there and you can see where that haze line is, kind of walks right up there. And then it goes all the way back up into here. So that has been cut, that has been buffed and it kind of has blended in that black. So it looks really, really good. I'm hoping we get the exact same uh, result over here as well as on the roof. So I'm gonna finish this entire car and then I'll come back for the final reveal. Hopefully we get this done before the sun goes down. Um, we've probably got another hour and a half, two hours here to finish this and it gets dark real early now. We're getting on to the shortest days of the year. Right now we're getting on about quarter to three. So we're really only about an hour and a half of daylight left. 
I got some work to do. I'm going to get to it. Hopefully, we can get this thing revealed while the sun's still out. Well, there it is, guys. There is my 97 Lincoln Town Car. All polished up and uh, ready to go. And uh, we still got a little bit of touch-ups to do. Little spots there. The clear coat kind of blended away pretty good in most spots. You see a little bit there. A little bit there. And, of course, the worst of the whole thing was up here on the roof. You can still see it, but it did uh, make a huge difference in the way this thing looks. And my goodness, even though that trunk is dull as all get out the paint, it cleaned up really well. The rest of the car, I mean, boys, oh boys, we just doubled the value on this car by buffing and polishing this thing out. I am stoked. So let's get this thing back in the garage and we'll talk to you about what's gonna happen with this car, or at least what my plans are Let's go inside. So at the beginning of this video, I told you that we were gonna be doing something special, some sort of a challenge with the old Lincoln. And basically what I'm going to do is I am going to set up a challenge, basically my $500 upgrade challenge. So all I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to get to this. I'm not sure what year I need, but I definitely want three quarter ton, likely gonna be a crew cab and probably gonna be a diesel. So. Uh, I want to get to that point. People say, well, why would you want to go in a diesel in this era of high gas prices and high diesel prices? Well, because eventually in the near future, I want to get to a point where I can take a car trailer and go looking for vehicles. And I need a bigger car trailer than what I currently have. Maybe one that does two or three vehicles at a time, maybe a gooseneck, triaxle, something that I can haul junk home with. Uh, or not junk, but potential project vehicles, not necessarily for me, but for somebody else, as I'm looking to move my business forward into doing that. So I need a truck to be able to do it. This is what I'd like to have. Who knows? Eventually, I've got to get there. So there's no real rules or anything like that, except for I don't want to put out any further cash than I already have. You guys know from this video right here, that this car cost me 500 bucks to buy. I'm into it for probably another 400 bucks in the form of getting the head gasket, the parts I needed, the timing chain and all that stuff to get this thing up and running the way it should. So now I'm putting it out to you. I wanna trade my 97 Lincoln Town Car for something else, something of hopefully equal or greater value. Now, if you've got something go ahead and email me. My email address is in the about section on my YouTube channel and send me some pictures. Show me what you've got. Preferably I'd like you to be in Canada because it's so much easier for doing the paperwork. Uh, but obviously if you are in this neck of the woods, which is uh, New England or the Maritime provinces, I can travel. I would hope that you'd be willing to do the same. So that's my goal is I want to get from this 97 Lincoln Town Car to this and I've got to keep trading up. So now we're into this thing for roughly about 900 bucks. So I'm hoping with all the work that I've done to it, the detail work that I've done to it, I've added some value. I'm thinking I could easily put this on my used car lot and probably get 2,500 to three grand out of it. No problem at all, even with the mileage that it has. This thing is ready for a safety inspection. All I gotta do is put the emergency brakes back on it. Uh, and then we'll be gold. That is the next thing to do to this car, and then it's inspectable. I can do that. I'll have a fresh oil change. We'll top up all the fluids. It will be ready to roll. That's my goal. That's what I want to be able to do. I'm hoping you guys can help me do that. Uh, the next vehicle, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll be fixing it up. We'll be cleaning it up. We'll be trying to get it to that next level of trade. So that's what I'm doing with this 97 Lincoln Town car. That's my goal. Hopefully you guys can help me out. That's the plan. Guys, if you're looking for some old car guy merch similar to the Dale the Truck t-shirt that I'm wearing right now, you can go to my Spreadshirt store. There's lots to be had there, including the old car guy logo and the Focus logo t-shirts. That way you can help support everything that I do here on this channel, and that way we can move to the next step of buying more project vehicles, maybe some Will It Runs, uh, stuff like that. So hopefully uh, you guys can help support the channel by buying some merch. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again real soon. Oh, and don't mind the Looney Tunes. They're just, I like to watch that in the background. <laughs>